Hello, everyone. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Coach Jay here. If you can see me, if you can hear me, definitely let me know by um, by commenting live. If you're watching get me live, if you're watching the replay, definitely comment replay, press a one or click one, click one. Write one in the comments um, if you can see me and hear me okay. I've been talking all morning, so I'm a little back and forth with my thoughts here. And sometimes I can speak faster than I can think sometimes. So anyway... Today is Lionsgate Portal. Happy 888 to all of you and to um, all of you that will watch the replay. So um, every year kind of go live around this time or on the date of 888 because I do believe in um, abundance. I do believe in abundance on your own terms. I believe in success on your own terms um, and all that good stuff. So uh, welcome, welcome to the live. If you're here, definitely come in live. Feel free to share this live if you feel um, led to do so. That would greatly help me get the word out, spread the, what is it called? Spread the the, the high vibes, the good vibes, the, the prosperity vibes today, especially today. Um, but in case this is your first time joining me, this is your first time joining me, I'm Coach J. Um, hey! Uh, coach J, I am a, a business and a leadership coach. I work with amazing women all over the world with creating offers that um, that do sell using our content messaging system, our classes to clients uh, system, and it's absolutely amazing. Um, I run a program called the Matrix CEO Coaching Program, and uh, this group container is absolutely awesome. So if you are interested in being coached to five-figure month scale there so that you can live the life that you want and have a business that supports your womanhood, you should totally, totally get in my DMs with the keyword matriarch and we can discuss how we can change your life and shift your business to fit what you desire and to have a beautiful, beautiful, positive human experience while we still have the time. Um, so this is very, very important. I want us to, uh, that's my neighbor, um, you know, definitely have a, um, a great, great, uh, you know, business. You're entitled to that. You're entitled to a great business. You're entitled to the life that you want. You're entitled to the love that you desire. You're entitled to the body you desire. You're entitled to the best health, uh, fit beautiful skin getting yourself together having the life that you want you're traveling and all these other different things and you are entitled to that so i want to just kind of pour into you if you are having such a crazy crazy year there's a lot of people that's talking about you know uh business closing and um you know getting my nervous system doing this my nervous system is doing that people going back to corporate even though corporate is actively laying off at the same time people are uh, uh, moving to different places for cost effectiveness or cost savings and uh, people cutting back and all of these things that we're doing to ourselves in the name of what, right? In the name of what? And then you have also other people on the flip, okay? Let's talk about the flip. The flip is, is that you do have uh, people, a smaller amount of people that have decided to like, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to play this game of lack. You know, I'm not going to play this game of, you know, I can't do this and I can't pay this and I can't pay that. There are people that are dead set on like going past the basics into self-fulfillment and self-actualization. These are the people I'm talking to. I'm talking to individuals that are tired of living this life of lack and, and this emotional roller coaster that we've elected to sit on. Instead of understanding that this system is about psychology and not your emotions. Now, your emotions are for you to process. Come on, somebody. Your emotions are for you to process. But outside, when we get front-facing, when it's time to do good business, I'm going to need for businesswomen to act like businesswomen. 
Ain't nobody playing with you out here, right? So you're going to have to decide which way you're leaning on because abundance is overflow. But you also understand that overflow and abundance is going in, in, in the uh, alignment of nature, right? So women are feminine. Feminine is nature. Nature is manifested as the planet, Mother Earth, as we call her. Mother Earth is abundant with everything you need to survive on this planet. But we also have to remember, too, is that the conqueror, I'm going to drive this thing home all this year so you can get this because a lot of y'all do not understand where you at. And this is why nothing's moving. Because you don't understand the game that you're playing in. Because either you're going to you're going to intentionally play the game, staying ahead in the game, or you're going to unconsciously play the game and get swept in the in the trade win. And then 10, 15 years go by and you're like, what happened? Like, uh, what happened? Uh, I got all this trauma. No, you, you, you were aware of where you are because you had somebody to hold you accountable to that. You see what I'm saying? So if we're going to play the game of psychology, then we have to understand the mind. We have to understand the mind in relationship to the God that we say we pray to, the universe, God, Yahweh, Elohim, Jehovah, whoever you call God. And we have to understand the relation of the mind to God and its relation to the earth and the relation to the system. So the system that we're in is the world. The earth is the planet, which is the nature of who we are without the doing. It's the being versus the doing down here. Y'all taking notes? So on 888... Right? So we, we are talking about um, what they call the Lion's Gate Portal. The Lion's Gate Portal. And when it comes down to 888, the number 8 is significant from a biblical perspective as well as spiritual perspective as being the number of abundance. The number of overflow. Right? So... This is a very special time. And shout out to my client, Sasha, for tagging me in this post that said that this month was going to be a very, very pivotal month because I believe we have three 888s for the first time, in, I think in our lifetime, in a long time, where <clears throat> we can now see not only today being 888 portal, but also we have another 888 on, what is this, 8-17-2024? And if I'm not mistaken, 8 uh, was it 26, 2024? So we got three 888s in this, in this month. This one is significant because it falls right after the new moon in Leo, right? So August is considered from a, a Gregorian calendar perspective as the eighth month. But we also know that if you are researching and following certain aspects of the astrological calendar and all these good things, that we really do actually have 13 months in the year. But I ain't going to go into that today. It's a whole different conversation. But we do have um, the, the time to manifest that which we desire. And we already know that when we talk about these certain aspects of astrology, like I'm not an astro uh, astrologer by any means. I'm not. I'm going to be 100%. That is not my specialization, but that is something that I feel that we need to start expanding and learning more about because we are in the age of Aquarius. So we're leaving the Piscean consciousness, which is all about hierarchy. It's all about the man first, the woman after that, and the child with God as a Godhead. So everything is a law um, in terms of you do as I say. You follow after me. I'm managing over you. I'm lording over you. Which, you know, why women, you know, just decided to accept that men were the leaders and the priests of the home. That's what they said. And we already know that men are are it collectively jack, look, jacking up that assignment. And so, um, and I'm just being 100. I mean, biblical or not, men are tearing up the houses. I'm just saying. 
Oh, not all men. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I said collectively. Okay? So, calm down. Because <laughs> I know some of y'all ready to go in the comments and say, we're not all of my husband. I ain't say your husband. Okay? I'm just saying collectively. Because I'm coming from a law of neutrality. I'm not coming from my emotions or my experience. I'm going off trans data and people's perspective out there that a lot more women are starting to understand that they are portals. Your portals of success. This is why you're favored. You're considered favored in the Piscean age. You're, you're considered, this is why, you know, a man that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and find favor uh, uh, with the Lord. And the thing is, is that a wife, a woman, is seen as, right? It used, it really definitely used to be a status, but now it's more so of a business conversation. And I think that that's no more than right. It's a business conversation. Um, and I think we need to just go ahead and just call it up for what it is, because there is a certain force in the system that really wants to allow and, and break women into this uh, process that's unnatural to us, which is why I feel like there is so much pushback because women now have a choice and all of these things that's going on in our world women now have a choice we're manifestors by nature anyway y'all do realize that too i'm just saying so i need you to understand that part um so when it comes down to this, and I'm, I'm bringing up my notes here because I want to make sure I'm staying on task because I'm, you know, today is a special day. And I want to make sure I bring some clarity to this so that like some of you who are still kind of I'm trying to understand Lionsgate. Uh, some of you are still trying to like understand manifestation. I'm not a manifestation coach, but that's part of the work that I do with business coaching because I do realize that a lot of women don't realize <laughs> that. They're in a capitalistic system. And the more emotional that you are, the more you can likely spiral and you get nothing done because the world does not care about your emotions. They don't care how much you scream and cry out to God. They don't, they really don't care. Okay. That's for your own personal spiritual practice, which is also why a lot of y'all get caught up on what's on the news. You get caught up on what's going on in other countries. Oh, this, this land over here is going through things and I feel bad. You feel bad because they want you to stay suppressed and not be able to walk into the destiny that you're meant to live. You can't pray and live a life that's in alignment to what you desire. And it also has something to do with geographically where we are versus where everybody else is. The Middle East has always been in conflict. That's none of our business in so many ways. But here in the West, we're in a conqueror system. We live in as conquered people, but also we're prospering while in Babylon. Clock that. You got to decide if you're going to prosper in Babylon is what I'm saying. The Lion's Gate portal is an astrological and spiritual event that occurs every year between July 26, 27, 28 and August 12, 13th. Around there with its peak being on August 8th. And the portal is believed to be a time of increased cosmic energy. My daughter and I were, uh, and I'm going to start, you know, really just freely talking about this for my own documentation's sake, because I need to have more video uh, and, you know, online digital footprints when it comes down to my own experience, because my daughter and I was walking the dog last night, our crazy dog, Yonsei, and um, we saw two... Uh, what is it called? Um, it looked like ships. Kind of like spaceships a little bit. But they were side by side. It was red lights. Red lights. And they were hovering. And uh, neither one of us could take our phone. Like, I couldn't even... Like, we just stood there. And my daughter ended up saying, uh, I don't want to be out here anymore. <laughs> she was like, I want to go inside. I want to go inside. This is making me weird. So, this was around probably 10, 15 ish last night okay and this is what i'm trying to tell you like you need to start looking in the sky i know there's several um 
you know, I see several summaries online talking about how they feel like the aliens or the aircraft or whatever we're seeing are demons. And then you got some people that say that they're trying to help us. They're trying to get in touch with us. I want to say it like this. If they are demons, I think they probably would have, you know, took us out by now. I don't know. Like, I just feel like, why wait? You know, the hovering and, you know, if they're going to be demons, like, like, why wait? Like, why just, why hovering, right? So, uh, <laughs> I'm just saying it from a perspective, like, can we just stop the conspiracy theories in terms of, like, are they evil or not? And just look at it from a state of cosmically. There's a lot of stuff going on. And I think that if you start tapping in and tuning in and just kind of looking in the sky instead of looking down, you know, you'll probably find a lot more answers and understand what is going on cosmically that's causing people to, um, to slow down, to get tired, to, to, you know, forsake consistency, complain about everything being negative and then on the flip side you got some people that are very hopeful that are still walking that is still making transactions that are still closing clients that are still bringing people into their businesses they are shifting they are shaking they are doing the things and they are staying ahead of the game instead of behind because right now it's not about impressing people with abundance it's about feeling abundant within and allowing that feeling and that emotion to just spill Right. And so you want a life that you are manifesting outside of yourself that is reflecting of the belief system of abundance. Courtney, thank you for bringing that up. She said the colors of the sky are likely to be assigned too. And I was just like this morning, me and my daughter was talking about that when I was taking her to school this morning. And we were just talking about how the sky looked. And she was like, Mommy, the sky is just so different. And I said, Manny, I have been saying the same thing. Even the sun looks different and it's a scorching heat. Like it's getting hotter. And the hot, <laughs> look, the hot that we're feeling is a little bit more concentrated than normal. I don't remember the, the heat being this scorchy, right? And, you know, that's also something that's going on astrologically because the sign, the ages are changing. The ages are changing. So this portal is believed to be a sign or a time, I'm sorry, a time of increased cosmic energy and alignment between the earth, the star Sirius, the Sirius, S-I-R-I-U-S, Sirius star system, and the sun in the astrological age or the astrological sign of, I'm sorry, yeah, sign of Leo. It's considered a powerful time for manifesting desires, spiritual awakening, and transformation, which means that in this season, in this season, I agree, Courtney, I agree. Um, transformation, I need you to think about that. Manifesting desires, spiritual awakening, and transformation. When it comes down to transformation, that means to turn and to become something else. So, which means that you have a chance to become a different person. If you would just focus on how can I benefit from this time? And is this really legit? You know, you're probably like, is this, that you know, I've heard it, Jay, and I don't know how to manifest, and I've tried this. The reason why a lot of us are not good at manifesting is because we won't sit down and, and sit down long enough to even learn how to calmly manifest. And most of us have to manifest from a state of panic. Like even this whole election, how this stuff is even happening. Like some people are reacting instead of coming from a space of process and understanding purpose and understanding um policy i'm just trying to help you i'm just trying to help you y'all gotta stop doing this stuff from the state of panic that's what's wrong so when it comes down to the cosmic alignment the portal opens when the star sirius rises in the sky 
aligning with the earth and the sun in Leo, right? So Sirius is often referred to us as our spiritual sun. And its energy is said to activate higher consciousness and accelerate spiritual growth. Accelerates spiritual growth. Accelerates spiritual uh, growth. I didn't glitch. I'm saying it over and over again because a lot of y'all don't understand. You're supposed to be growing spiritually. This ain't Bible study. This is not religious conversations. This is spiritual growth conversations. Which means I don't, I don't use spirituality to get atonement. I guess I use spirituality to get information. Y'all quiet on me and I don't know what that's about, but I hope y'all ain't sleep or... I don't know. I, I, I just. Whew. And see, sometimes I can go up. And I got to like, you know, hold myself. So when we talk about accelerating spiritual growth, which means that accelerating how I relate to, communicate with, identify with, and partner up with the spirit realm to get things done here. Just like with money. We know money is a manifested currency, but it also is digitized. Okay, so we, we still use paper money. Don't get this. Come on now. Let me go ahead and let me teach this right quick because y'all you ain't going to understand until I just get it through your skull. We still have to buy by this. Okay? There's still an energetic behind this. It's paper, right? It's, it's, it's very, very important. Paper! This is important. Here. I can get things done with this. This actually can buy me a little bit of happiness. This can take me to another place on the globe. But this is also what is necessary for me to understand that I can, I can either worry about this or I, I can become powerful enough to bypass this. I can, I can, I can, I'm, I'm powerful enough to override needing this because this, this is where, this is the difference between middle class thinking and wealth thinking. Wealth thinking is time. The wealth is seen in time. Middle class minded people, I want more of this more than I do time. You want me to break that thing down for you? Okay. Accelerating spiritual growth, which means I understand at some point I don't become slave to this. How do I get this? How do I get more money? How do I get more money? No, 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 no. This is easy. I'm going to tell you why it's easy. I can get a job today if I wanted to. I can get on LinkedIn, make a few phone calls. I can, I can go, I can pack up and go back to Texas if I want to and give me a job. I... Nothing is hard. I can get a client today if I want. If I really put my head together and get a, a $30,000 client today, no problem. But if I want an opulent experience, I would have to quantum. See, a lot of y'all asking the wrong questions. You asking God, how can you get more money when you need to ask God, I want to go to Bora Bora. I want to be able to open up this school. I want to be able to invest in this. I want to be able to get some real estate. I want to be able to do this and do that because your your thinking is, I might as well keep this out because I'm going to be referencing this, but you want your focus right here. This ain't nothing. I just, I can exchange this for something. I can go and get me a, a 
Chick-fil-A, me and Maddie, something from Chick-fil-A. Uh, two salads or whatever. What this is, it, it buys me an experience. What's on the other side of this is worth more than what's in my hand. <laughs> okay. I'm not worried about y'all today. I'm not worried about it. accelerating spiritual growth. Stop worrying about what this is and get on the other side. I'm worth more than this. Y'all need to start telling yourself that I'm worth more than this. All you got to do is learn how to create more of this so that you can have more experiences. That's where your Lions Gate portal comes in. It ain't about manifesting more money. It's about manifesting life, quality of life. Understanding that spiritual growth is about getting past this. Can we get past the rent? Can we get past the light bill? Hmm? Can we get past how we going to... Uh, I don't know how to get past... I need the... I need the Somebody need to give me some money. Can you can we get past the dollar bills? See, I had a client not too long ago worried about something. Worried about money. I said, you just went on a vacation. You just went on vacation. She was like, I did. I did. I said, so what happened to that faith? Because you didn't have it when you went on vacation. But you came up with it though. It just, it, it came through. And you had a great time on your vacation. And she was like, I did. I said, so the same power that you brought in that money on time and was able to go on vacation. And now you're worried about how you're going to get more. You just, it's just like when, I forgot that passage of scripture where, because y'all know, know I used to preach. For those of you who are new. Just like that passage of scripture when Jesus had just fed. I believe it was the 4,000. Because it was two different. I think it's two or three different scenarios. We, he did the 5,000 did the 4,000. But I think it was the 4,000. And him and the disciples got on the boat. <laughs> and I think this is when Jesus got an attitude. And one of the disciples said that we don't have anything to eat. And Jesus was like, did you just not see me feed all these people? And y'all was just with me. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. But it's just the, the fact of the matter. It's like, I just did this for you. You got the man on the boat with you that turned fish and bread into oodles and oodles and oodles and oodles of food. For thousands of people. And y'all, it's like three of y'all on this boat, and you like, we're we ain't got nothing to eat. That's crazy talk. That's crazy work. Spiritual growth. Recognizing that the same way that you manifested the last miracle, you can do that every single day. Why can't you manifest a miracle a day? Why can't you just live a miraculous life? Why does miracles have to be sporadic in the surprise? If you expecting a miracle, why are you surprised when it show up? That's the part where you gotta mess, you gotta grow through that. I don't get surprised no more when when I ask for something from spirit realm and I get it. I'm not. Oh my god! I don't do that. I just said, oh, there it is. Thank you. We rolling on. It's supposed to be normal for you. Y'all the ones make this hard and make this a a a, a extra experience. It's what it's all right, God. God did it for me. God is so good. Why is that that's supposed to be normal? Like when I when I manifest clients or when I bring clients in and enroll clients, I don't get oh my God. I don't do that no more. You know why I don't do that no more? Because it's that's supposed to happen. I run a business. I'm supposed to be closing clients on a regular basis. I'm supposed to be getting sales on a regular basis. Why can't you normalize miracles? Why does it have to be an event every time you get something, like you find money on the ground, you ask God for money and money on the ground, and all of a sudden you're acting a fool and, and crying and slobbing all in the street. Just get the money off the ground. <laughs> what 
We got to stop being extra when it comes down to expectations from the spirit. That's growth. And it doesn't mean you're ungrateful, but I don't want to be, oh, that's man telling you that. Like, you need to be grateful. You need to, you need to, God didn't have to do it. He could let you sit there and be broke. No, no, he ain't going to do that. First of all, you shut your pie hole about that. Don't tell me that God could have did this for you. No, you could have did this for me because see, you want to you wanna make God picky about who he talked to and who he blessed. Your God can be picky. My God ain't picky. When I say this is what we're doing or what, what are we doing so we can have a meeting about it, I'm checking in with the spirit ram every day for my morning meeting because see, the first meeting is with the spirit. This is in the unseen realm because when you live by the spirit, the bank of glory is available to you. Food is always available to you. Experiences and, and vacations, opulence, what you desire. Your whole life should be a reflection of how the level of faith that you have in your own power to connect with that realm. <laughs> Courtney, right. So the number eight is associated with abundance, power, and infinite potential. Infinite potential. Number eight. You need to write this down somewhere on a napkin, on something, in your notes app, something. The number eight is associated with abundance, power, and infinite potential. Where is your power? Girl, I saw 888 five times today. Where is your power? It ain't about seeing the number sequence. It's about where's your power? I just keep seeing eight everywhere. I don't care about you seeing eight, eight everywhere. Does your life reflect power? The double eight during the lion's gate is believed to amplify these energies. Triple eight even more. Making it a potent time for manifesting and setting those intentions. Okay, so here we go. This is the next one right here. This is, gonna, this is probably going to tell you some of y'all up. Spiritual gateway. Now, this way everybody needs to be waking up because I'm so tired. Of, if I hear another person say, I'm trying to, I need to make more money or I'm trying to get the money or I'm trying to manifest money. I'm going to need for you to stop. You unclog your spiritual gateway. You a woman. You're supposed to have, always have access to resources. You're either supposed to have a skill set to get it or you need to have people in your life that can give it to you. I don't care. I do not care. You need to work on that. If you're a feminine woman, you need to have resources in your phone that you can call or text anytime to say, I need this. I don't know what that's about. I, don't, I, I, I can't. I can't relate. I can't relate to women that can't call somebody up and say, you a woman in this realm, in a man's world. You you should not have to be the woman that have to figure everything out for yourself. I'm sorry. Now, I'm just saying. You work on that. You got to work on that. That's your homework. Because, baby, I, I can't relate. When you... When, Girl, just call up some. Yeah, girl, ain't got no bad. Ain't got no bad. Ain't got no bad. Why don't you have somebody in your phone? You a feminine woman. You, you, you know. Okay. Spiritual gateway. This portal is seen as a gateway to higher realms. Allowing you to connect more deeply with your intuition. 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 Women, where your intuition? Wake it up. I'm going to mess you up right here. And I don't care. You can get in my DMs and you can kickbox yourself. You are a woman. There is no reason why you should not have money. I'm not fighting you today. You can fight with yourself. If you don't have no money... That's a spiritual problem. Radical spiritual problem. 
You heard it here first. I'm gonna say it again. Let me let me make sure I say it again. I wish I could. I need learning in Spanish and French and Portuguese. If you don't have any money as a feminine woman, there is something spiritually radically wrong. There's a spiritual problem. Well, I, I it's Jesus Christ over here. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's, I don't care what it is. I don't care. Whatever you identify with, there's no reason. As a woman, as a feminine woman, as a woman, as a woman, because a woman is a feminine woman. So I'm, I'm not going to use feminine woman in the same context because a woman is feminine. Okay. Because you got female and you got woman. Okay. Woman is the essence of a female. You got that woman, the, the immaturity of a woman. Okay. So, as a woman, not having money is a spiritual problem for you. That's a problem. This portal is seen as a gateway to higher realms. I know they trigger you a little bit. That's okay. Allowing you to connect more deeply with your intuition, spirit guides, and higher self. It's time to release old patterns. Old patterns. It's time to release old patterns. I'm going to say it again. It's time to release. This is a time to release old patterns. So going into today, tomorrow, all the way into the 12th, 13th. You got a chance to release old patterns and step into and step into energetically, spiritually, and step into, which means that what you see in the spirit, you begin to walk in it as if it already happened. And when you step into, come on somebody, when you step into the new and more aligned, more aligned version of yourself. Thank you, Quanisha version of yourself your aligned version of yourself and the environment that supports the more aligned version of yourself starts coming into your human experience it comes to meet you because you walk by a different code than you did before because you released old patterns and you stepped into a new, more aligned version of yourself. Okay, so Jay, what do you mean by that? Okay, so yeah, I know that, but what, what is the, what is the next step for you? When you see yourself, when you close your eyes, when you see your life, cause some of y'all be saying it real casual. And then you be acting like it really can't happen. But when you say stuff, you know, and it kind of come out like slang a little bit, like, you know, girl, if I had, if I was just, Girl, if I was 20 pounds lighter, I would rock that dress. Girl, let me have had some money because I would have booked that trip right now if I had that money. Girl, I know I'm supposed to be a millionaire. Like, I can just, I know I'm supposed to be. Girl, if I lived in L.A., that's where I would always wanted to go. But you know what? I said to myself... I'm going to go and stay here, but I'm telling you, girl, if I was in L.A., I would have already been. So you be saying stuff like that, but you really want it. And because you are still holding on to old patterns, you play it off as a joke, but you really mean it. That's really where you want to stand in your power. That's where y'all be losing your power right there. Because you be saying things as a joke. And and if you are saying, like, well, Jay, what if I'm, you know, somebody that's saying, you know, man, if I didn't have all these kids, I would be here. Let me tell you why that's a... You got all those kids or you got those children. Those are your children. And you can live your best life with your children. You know, that's a thing, right? Like, please stop. Being resentful of souls that you brought in in an old pattern. The, the more aligned version of yourself 
is a woman that can make money and bring up and rear emotionally managed children that actually love their mama and actually love their father if that's the case because see you can pray for this stuff i don't want you to resent the father of your children if that's you if you have like the father of the children is not acting up you got intuition you got power why can't you i'm gonna tell you that god honest truth can i just can i testimony real quick okay because I may have to end this and probably do a part two because I got to go in the house because my battery about to go, um, I mean, 20%. My daughter and her father were at odds for a long time, for a couple, for a few years. I ain't like that. I had words with him about it and I had words with her about it. And I said, I need this to, I need something to happen. I need something to happen. So then I went to the spirit realm. I told God, you know, for the sake of the conversation. So God, it was like, listen, <laughs> what we not finna do? You ain't finna stress me out about these two right here. Cause I want her dad in her life. I didn't have, I, I, I didn't, I'm not here to sit up here and do, bring this together. Cause she need a daddy. She is not finna be one of them girls out here without acting like she ain't got no daddy. She got a daddy. I need him to act right. I need her to act right. I need this to come together. And I'm expecting that that's going to happen. Within a, within a month. Mommy. And you see, it looked like this. You know, me and dad are going to go to Dallas. They went to Dallas. Had a beautiful trip. He, he put that together for him and her. He said, we're going to go to Dallas and we're going to figure this out. We're going to talk about what we're ever going to talk about. He took her to dinner. He took her to see fireworks and all this stuff. That's what I wanted. Then he said, I said, because I don't, I said, I'm, my emotions are too high. I, I, I've always, uh, what is it called? I've always wanted the father of my child. Like if I had children, this when I was younger. And I used to say, I ain't teaching my daughter how to drive. I ain't teaching my son how to drive. The daddy going to have to teach him. The daddy will have to teach because my nerves too bad. Y'all, my child is 16 years old, right? And she's driving. I started off teaching her. My nerves are too bad. I know that. And I said, God, hey, hold on. She got a daddy. She got a daddy. And and I'm going to serve this too. She is, um, her dad is married to another woman. I get along with her too. We hug each other and everything. He started teaching her how to drive. He started come. He started coming to get her from my house. You know, I don't, I don't talk. I ain't got to see. And that's the thing. I don't have to talk to him. That's another thing. Some of y'all. I want to be friends. I'm friends. I want to be friends with my ex. I ain't friends with him. He know we ain't friends. <laughs> he can be her daddy. And I ain't got to be his friend. I ain't got to be jaw jacking and, and clowning and laughing and talking all in his face. That ain't my... That's her daddy. I'm out the way. She got a phone. Communicate with your daddy. That's why I got a phone. So you can stop calling me and call your baby. That's abundance to me. I, I ain't, I'm a single mama. I'm a do it all myself. I got a deadbeat. The devil is a lie. <laughs> Spirit, I need help with this. You have to get him together because what we're not going to do is struggle, right? I'm not going to do all this teaching how to drive. I'm not doing all that. My nerves are too bad. He started taking her to take her to drive two, three days a week. When she went out on her first date, I talked about that on my post. I said, this before, I said, what we ain't finna do? I'm not finna be me no more by myself. She got a daddy. I need him to be involved. I need him to be involved. Y'all stop doing that. Call heaven down for your situation. I believe in villages. I believe in villages and I believe in paying for villages. I believe in calling in. 
I don't do deadbeats. I went through all of that for years. I went back and forth to my son. Hey, guy, he made me so sick. And he did it. And he don't even... Dun. All this whining I was doing with not understanding that I can call heaven down. Absolutely, Asia. And look, you push... And, and I love it. Because you be like, baby, mama is going on a break. And that's what I'm saying. Pray for your baby. Cover your baby. And you go on. Because spiritual growth means understanding that wherever your baby is, she is being loved and cared for in the best possible way. And the parent got wisdom. Pray for wisdom over. You want abundance not just with your bank account, but with the people in your life. You ain't gotta, you don't have to key key in your ex's face and be friends and go out and clink clink and girl, we going out. I ain't going out. Come get your baby and y'all have a good time and I'll see you later. I'm not, I don't have to hold and have a badge on. I had I raised her by myself. Silly. No, but you want you want everybody to go out of town and have a vacation. I ain't gonna do all that. I ain't gonna do not. I ain't gonna do all that. That's crazy. I ain't gonna do all that. That's what I prayed for when she went out on her first date. It happened. It happened. Her daddy, Jay. You want to welcome? Come over here. The boy can meet Maddie. I mean, you know, the boy, I can meet Maddie and whatever, whatever, whatever. I said, cool. I was fine with that. When I walked in their house, I saw him. He spoke to me and I said, where's the lady of the house? I said it just like that because I'm respecting the space. I ain't got no attitude. She came right around the corner. She said, here I am, Jay. We, gave, we embraced each other, and I told her I was hot. She said, girl, let me go get a fan. She went and got her Beyonce Renaissance fan. I was like, okay, she throwing shade because I want to go to the Renaissance concert. No, I'm just playing. I'm being funny. No, but I laughed about it, and I sat there and fed myself because y'all know I'm 41. Anyway, <laughs> but what I'm saying is I didn't question that boy. I didn't run questions. I believe in shutting my mouth and let men talk to men. They went outside, me and his wife, talking and laughing. Now, that's my ex-husband outside. Spiritual growth. Spiritual growth. Me and her laughing and joking about them sitting outside. Maddie just nervous as all get out. And that boy came. I didn't say a word to him. I spoke. I'm Maddie's mom. And I sat there quiet while the daddy did what daddies do. That's what I asked for. I don't want to question another man like that. I prayed for that. I asked for that. Spiritual growth. Y'all stop taking on stuff by yourself when you don't have to. My ex trying to, girl, his, his uh, sister looking all on my page. Spiritual growth. Why can't you order her to turn her attention towards something else? You ain't got to call her up and go off and cuss her out. Uh-uh. You ain't do that. You need to start saying what you want to happen. And now I need her to turn away. I need her to get off my page so I can walk in my destiny. I need to go somewhere else and, and bother somebody else. Don't, don't bother me. The more aligned version of myself is not tripping. Girl, he done moved on to somebody else. Okay, what's it to you? Because he ain't developed. They had a beautiful wedding. Or oh, they had a beautiful ceremony. And they went this place. Okay, spiritual growth. He ain't evolved. evolved so why are you tripping? Because he ain't e evolved. You ain't got to work. First of all, that's not your problem anymore. Spiritual growth. And I'm going to say this. I wasn't talking about my ex. <laughs> I'm just saying some of you that may be going through that or saying like, oh, my friend, oh, I see this girl over here killing it in her business. And here I am still trying to figure it out. First of all, God is trying to show you silly, silly. That you got people in your proximity that is showing you consistency brings on results. 
So that's a lesson to you to get off your feelings and understand that you don't know what it took for her to get there. That's why a lot of y'all got to get out of folks' stuff, out of folks' face in terms of trying to figure out how they did this, how they did that, how they make $20,000 a month, how they make $50,000 a month. And I'm over here, I got all this, you know, I be doing all this stuff and nothing happens for me. The reason why it's not happening for me is because there's no spiritual growth. As a spiritual bro. Mm -mm. This is more about you than it is about money, by the way. Has, you know, money is just a byproduct. It's the result of. It's the effect. But the cause is you. The cause is you. Because you have not evolved spiritually nothing's happening because you are more worried about how you look to other people nothing is happening because you are more worried about your feelings than learning stoicism and psychology and how to just call heaven down nothing's happening the reason why the reason why Everything, if you look at everything around you, from your car to your house to your the way you carry yourself, your business, your bank account, the first place you need to look at is your uh, surroundings. 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 And look at your bank account. There's two places you need to look at. Digitally, in the ether, your money is sitting there. Digitally, people ain't got to do nothing but type in some numbers and give you an amount. Of how much money that you have in your possession, how many, you know, how much investments do you have, etc. How your business is doing. Your business talks to you by way of numbers. But the numbers are a byproduct. Sales is a byproduct of your impact. So all this, you know, Jay, you my favorite coach and stuff, but I don't I don't see you investing in yourself and growing. And becoming one with spirit. Business is easy. Business, I'm going to say that one more time. Business is very easy. B business can be very simple. The, the reason why it's not easy for you is because it requires you to change. It requires you to spiritually grow. And I'm not talking about in terms of like, oh, I'm going to Bible study. I'm talking about spiritual evolution. Because you got to go from belief to knowing I'm going to say this and I'm going to get off of here ain't got much time you know all this stuff that's going on in the world this is a collective form of consciousness so whatever the collective mind thinks about that which it is you can't argue with the collective if they want a calamity and, and Armageddon to happen in a manifesto called the Bible is going to happen. You know why? Because when collective forms of communities that are reading the same book, interpreting it differently, but all the same at the same time, you're going to get revelations. You're going to get the last days. And before you even go further, y'all stop saying it's the last days or it's the end times. It's the end of an age. The world is going to keep going. There's going to still be people here in tw going past 2030. It ain't the last days. It's the last of the age. And some of y'all need to go pick up another Bible in a verse that's older. Stop looking at 2024 versions or 1999 versions of the Bible. You need to go to 1590. You need to go to the 1800s. Go back to when the scripts were more original so you can understand that the reframe is to mess you up and believe something else in that wasn't there before. It's the end of an age. It's the end of an age. Jesus on his way back. Christ has already come. I'm very confident when I say that, and I know this is going to mess with you. You're more than welcome. You are more than welcome coming back. Well, what did you, I feel like, you know, with Jesus, it's supposed to be coming back. You're not going to tear up the planet. 
and escape. This is God's creation. God ain't, the rapture was uh, uh, put into the Bible way after the fact, into the 1800s. You need to do your research. And, and this is why I want y'all to wake up. This is not about wokeness. It's about spiritual growth. This is supposed to be the highest time in your life. We are in one of the most potent, innovative, exciting times of our life. And they got you over here hovering in the corner, laying in an infant cradle state, rocking back and forth, borderline to the psych ward. Your emotions are unraveling all over the place and you worried about some money and you say you love God. Why are you so fearful? I'm just ready for Jesus to come back. You are ready for Jesus to come back because you're not doing anything. You're not even trying to work, make the world a better place. You're not even trying to spread joy and spread life and spread impact to people because you're too busy waiting. The, the, the harvest is right. The harvest is right. And I thank God that I get on here and encourage you. I'm grateful for that. But y'all have got to start transforming. There is no transformation. You, There's no reason why you should still be in the same space that you were five years ago. That doesn't make any sense to me. Why are you not evolving? I don't care about your photo shoot. I don't care about your brand colors. Why are you not transforming? I don't care how airbrushed you are in your photos. I don't care how tight you, you fold your arms. I don't care how slant and, and how your hair is slinging in the wind. Ain't nothing transforming though. You pretty. You look good in that dress. But you're still in the same place. You're still going back. You're still in nostalgia. I remember when days where I just want these men to act like they're not. So now what? What what now? What are you going to call down? Where's your spiritual growth? Get that together. Get that together first. I got to go. <laughs> so what you need to do? You need to worry about, you need to focus on, you need to be concerned about because the concern is for your spirit. The concern is not for, this, this, that, this ain't the concern. I don't care about, this right here is not a concern. This is not a concern. It's not. This is not a concern. This is easy. I don't care what they tell you on, on, on the thing. Money is so hard to come back. Spiritual growth. You're bigger than this. You're bigger than this. You know why you're bigger than this? Why you're more worthy? You're more valuable than this? I'm not... Yes, this is good for retirement. Absolutely. I'm not telling you to be irresponsible. I'm not telling you to be financially or fiscally irresponsible. Please understand that. Okay? But what I am saying, do not worship this. Do not be concerned about this. This will come and go. Be more focused on learning how to get past this gate. This is a gateway. But spiritually gateway, I can jump over this. I can quantum jump over this. You got to start looking up. Stop bowing your head down. Look up. Your help cometh. Your help cometh. You too busy looking this way. Your help cometh from my help coming from the Lord. Where is the Lord? The law. The law. Principle. Principle.
I mean, just read my Bible. Look up. You can read your Bible. But you're going to look up. You need to look up. There's no way. I'm, 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 I'm closing right here. And this is a strong conviction. The reason why your business ain't moving because you're not. The reason why your business is not moving because you are not trusting yourself and aligning with this. There is no reason why as a woman, I don't care how old you are, and I wish I was younger so that I can know these things and bypass a lot of this stuff. But I knew, I knew, and I could tap in, but I didn't know that this information was available for all areas of my life. When you start walking in a newer version of yourself, you're going to see things change and shift. But you're going to have to trust that. But the reason why stuff is not moving is because you have not committed to a newer, higher level version of yourself. And that's where your abundance is. Your abundance is not in the $20 bill and the $100 bills and the cash out and the Stripe and the PayPal. Those are processing systems. To process your transactions, but you are the transformation. If 888, if you see it all day, I don't care about what you see all day. I care about who you are becoming every day. Clock that. Have a good day.